You know, when you take a tactic that's meant for a specific player and you don't use that player and you use completely different teams instead, bad things tend to happen. Yes, ladies and gents, this is one called the Gabriel Jesus effect. Uh, and as you could see, if we go to the league table, it has not done any kind of wonders for these teams. Obviously, I did not use Gabriel Jesus uh, from Arsenal. Tottenham did average. Newcastle did kind of below average. And Wolves, yeah. I mean, if you just take all the teams, drop them down a couple, and that's pretty much where they lie. But Tottenham in ninth, no European spots whatsoever, 57 points. Newcastle with 53, and then Wolves at 43, only 11 points above relegation. Not great at all. If we look at the tactic itself, it is a 4-2-3-1. You do have a sweeper keeper again in attack. Uh, you have two wing backs on support, two ball playing defenders in defend, a box to box in support, a central midfielder in defend, inside forward on attack on both sides, an attacking midfielder in support, and then a center, a complete forward, central forward, a complete forward in attack up front. It is a custom gag and press, positive mentality, in possession. Fairly narrow attacking with approach to, uh, play is underlap on the left and right and play out of defense. Passing directness is shorter. Tempo is slightly higher. Final third, whip crosses, work the ball in the box and be more expressive. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute to the center backs and full backs and then take short kicks. And then out of possession, high press line of engagement, higher defensive line, uh, trigger press much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution and step up more. No opposition instructions as usual. Looking at schedules, we're going to not see a whole lot of stuff. Uh, you do see a nice run from Tottenham going from Red Bull all the way down to uh, to Frankfurt. But then overall, I mean, just spotty, a very bad August. Uh, are they out in any competitions already? Champions League? Wow, Marseille 6-0. Uh, EFL Cup, they're moving on. That's a fantastic post-World Cup run right there to Arsenal 0-0. Liverpool nil five in the EFL Cup semi-final first leg, drawing nil nil at home. So they are out of the EFL Cup there, but they are moving on and everything else until you get to the Champions League round of 16, AS Monaco losing out and then uh, winning 2-1 there. But unfortunately that kicks them out there. Manchester United won three FA Cup semi-final loss. And the last two, I mean, months are just dreadful for them. Three wins, three losses in April. Only one win against Leicester in May, and yeah, you're dropped out pretty quick. Wolves have a completely awful August. Uh, the only win, minus a, oh, well, Alessandro, never mind, is an Everton 2 0 win in the FL Cup second round, but that is awful. And then an awful September, only one win against Nottingham Forest. Fantastic October. Uh, until that nil one against Fulham, Leicester nil two. EFL Cup third round, you move on against penalties. Fourth round, quarters, you're moving on in the cups, which is nice. Wrexham, 6-0. Sorry, Ryan Reynolds and, and other guy, uh, but 6-0 thrashing of Wrexham right there. But then dropping completely. Chelsea, 2-all draw. Manchester United, 2-all. EFL Cup uh, semifinal first leg. Losing out 2-6 away from home. So you're dropped out in the EFL Cup there. Uh, where's the FA Cup? Right there. Sandwich in between. Leicester, 0-3 FA Cup fourth round loss. And then, I mean, you got a fantastic march. You got Manchester United all the way down to Leeds, but still not able to pick it up all that much. I mean, these runs right here just could have been a lot better. And then Newcastle losing out immediately in against Burnley, two to four in the uh, EFL Cup second round. And then pretty spotty of a nice run of three there, but still. Uh, FA Cup third round out against Manchester United, always the bogey team against for uh, pretty much everyone. Uh, and then just absolutely spotty until you get to May. Fantastic May. I mean, three points right there. Could have been a little more one-all draw against Everton. Fulham and Wolves probably should have done better. But losses, four sets of losses right there. Not easy losses. But overall, yeah, I mean, not great. Let me know what you think when it comes to transfers. Uh, what they've done basically is because they're in the squad and you're starting from before January, they've thrown everyone in as a June 27th you know, transfer. So you have Dan Juma, you Don Juma, you have Porro, you have Longley. They're all in there at that time. Should they have done it where they come in in January instead of here? But then again, you've got money issues. So I don't know. But anyway, you have those teams in there. So uh, Almuez Ali, Lucas 
Zalarian uh, from Columbus Crew, seven million. Victor Nelson from Galatasaray, fifteen and a half. Uh, Henrik Pereira, if one point four from Benfica, and Vegas from CF Monterey, four point seven. So those were the new boys in. Uh, only really Max Robinson out. Everyone else loan. So, uh, but overall, it's just interesting the way they do the transfers in the the winter updates. And Wolves do have Wilson Manafa from FC Porto. I don't know him. Uh, 850k to 1 million. You do have Cunha in there and Traore and all them. So they're up there. Uh, the only two outs, Diego Costa, 975. And then Dexter Lembica- Lembikisa, as we've seen before, for 725 to Norwich. And some of these we've seen before for Newcastle. Peter Zielinski from Napoli, 35 million. Loftus Cheek from Chelsea on loan. Uh, Donny Van de Beek from Manchester United on loan, Ronnie Edwards from Petersburg, Chris Maxwell from Blackpool, and Julian Ryerson from Dortmund on loan. Uh, anyone out? Gillespie and Diallo, 475k and 150k. These people are not really selling big players at all. And as we quickly look at the squads, feel free to pause whenever you see a player you want to see. Not a lot of green for Tottenham, though. Not a lot of green for Wolves either. Uh, they do have a couple more, however, even though they're lower in the table. And Newcastle have a lot in the last five games, but not overall average rating. Uh, 706 is, seems to be their highest. Seems to be a little sad. Premier League stats-wise, Man City with most goals, but Newcastle in there with 64. Wolves and Tottenham with 58 and 57 apiece. Fewest shots. Tottenham the only one with 484. Uh, most possession, Tottenham and Wolves. Most dribbles made, nobody. Fewest conceded, nobody. Most shutouts, Tottenham tied for fifth with 14. Most tackles won, nobody. Best completion, Tottenham and Wolves in there. But again, passing and most possession seems to be fairly standard these days. Most shots for Wolves and Tottenham, 597 and 564 apiece. And most points per game, nobody. Because nobody came in the top eight. Player overview, Holland, of course, 33 goals. But Harry Kane in there with 21, average for him. Cunha with 19, a little below average, I think, for, for Cunha. Most assists, Trippier with 12. And Pablo Sarabia for, with 11 with Wolves. Most player of the match awards, absolutely nobody. Dribbles, fewest conceded. Most shutouts, Hugo Lloris, there you go with the 14. Most tackles won, Wolves, Mateus Nunez, 99. Most key passes, Trippier, there you go, 117. Sarabi with 106. Most shots, uh, Cunha with 97, Traore with 97, and Nunez with 90. So pretty average, I would say, for you know all these tactics that we've been doing. For the data hub, I will say, I do kind of want to go through these quickly. Uh, but overall performance is fairly on par in a lot of these different areas, but uh, the XG per 90 is higher. The shots per game is higher. The XGA, the expected goals against per game is sadly higher. Um, everything else fairly on par. I mean, even that's somewhat on par. The team attacking is fairly nice. Uh, again, the dribbles per game, not so much, but the team defending is where the problem is. Uh, and you can see they're doing a lot of fouls made per game, which is not good. Uh, the XG, the expected goals against per game, again, not great. But everything else, you know, blocks per game, clearances per game, uh, interceptions per game, tackling percentage is on, but everything else defensively is not great for Tottenham. Wolves is showing similar things. Shots per game is up. Uh, the non-penalty expected goals for 90 is up. Passing percentage is slightly up. Everything else down. Uh, team attacking is where it's at. The team defending, I mean, not even breaking through uh, the Premier League average at all. With this, I'm definitely not expecting much for Newcastle. General performance, uh, the non, non-penalty expected goals. Again, goals per game are up, which is nice. Shot percentage is up, uh, but, you know, expected goals against. Conceded goal per game. Things are just down for, for everything else. Attacking is where it's at. Again, dribbles. These these tactics don't do the dribbling piece. Uh, but fouls per game is so much higher. Uh, blocks per game is up, which is nice. Tackling percentage is, is either on par or just slightly up. But everything else, not good at all. Wolves at least had the, the fouls per game down to an average. But Newcastle just fouling left and right. And if we end, as usual, on the all-player stats for all the competitions whatsoever, Harry Kane is top goal scorer with 33 goals, Sun with 7'11", highest average rating, Kulisevsky with 10 assists, and then Harry Kane with 9 player of the match awards. Wolves, Cunha with 24 goals, nice tally there, Nunez with 7'27", highest average rating, Sarabi with 15 assists, so pretty much, so far, absolutely average of what you see in all these tactics. I mean, this is Wolves 
Nuna, I, uh, Cunha and Sarabi are just doing fantastic jobs. Too bad they're only on loan, so we'll see what happens. Most player of the match awards, six for Sarabia. So yeah, these two guys, Cunha, well, include Nunes, who's already on the team, doing very well. And if we end with Newcastle, oh my God, Isaac with only 11 goals. They must have spread it out a little bit. Then Maximin with 706 highest average rating, Trippier with 12 assists, as we've seen. Uh, high, Alan St. Maximin with four player of the match awards. Overall, not good. Qualify for Champions League for another year. Wow. That's a tough call for 11th place. They'll have to spend a lot of money in the summer and then see what happens. But overall, again, this tactic was geared towards Gabriel Jesus. Uh, just did not do it for any of the teams that we have. I don't know what it would be like for Arsenal, who with, even without it, third place right there, 78 points, not too far off eighty, uh, the 84 for Man City or 83 from Liverpool. So, but anyway, that's how it works. So anyway, that I am Stephen FM for the Football Manager blog channel saying thank you as always for watching. Take care and enjoy. Thank you.